China's property market is imploding. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today. And things with China's real estate market continue to go from bad to worse now as their property developers are outright failing, which is threatening to topple their banking system. Let's head over to Bloomberg where we start today's story out with this headline that you may remember from a prior show as China to offer special loans to troubled property developers, but it didn't work. And China will offer special loans through policy banks to ensure property projects are delivered to buyers, adding to signs of an official support for an industry grappling with a debt crisis and slumping home sales. But did it work? Doesn't look like it because lender now seizes Evergrande's Hong Kong headquarters in a bid, of course, due to cash. The lender, whose identity has not been confirmed, informed Evergrande earlier this week that it appointed a receiver to take charge of the property valued at $1.2 billion. And this is reason why they're short of cash, because Evergrande tried twice to sell the tower, but the sale again fell through because the bids were too low, reflecting Evergrande's desperate need for cash. And that's what the story is about, is the banks sold properties that weren't finished, buyers are now not wanting to pay on them, and the developers don't have the money to finish them. Evergrande has been divesting assets, including property and its stakes and companies, in a bid to repay some of its creditors. Its chairperson even put up his personal assets for sale, including his jets. But that won't be enough, as Evergrande had said it would sell its remaining stakes in China's Xinjiang Bank for $1.1 billion. And in making matters worse, the property sector looks like it's slumping. With China's 2022 property sector outlook worsens, home prices seen falling, this headline from Reuters. And new home prices are expected to fall 1.4% in 2022, a survey by Reuters of more than 10 analysts and economists polled just recently. In the May quarterly survey, analysts expected prices to remain unchanged for the year. Now you think about this as being a big problem because if you look back to you know, the great financial crisis, what actually helped prolong it from even starting is property prices just continued to rise in the U.S. But what happened when people couldn't afford to make their payments that much well it was okay because they could just sell their home but what happens when you have that double whammy a whole price is falling and people not making their payments now you can see why china's property center is on the verge of imploding Property sales were also seen slumping a whopping 24.5% in 2022, far bigger drop than the 10% forecast back in May. And the property sector, which accounts for about a quarter of China's economy, now keep that in mind, it's a huge, huge part of their economy, has lurched from crisis to crisis since the summer of 2020, after regulars stepped in to cut excess leverage, causing some developers to default on their debts and struggle with completing projects, none of which that has gotten any better and has now resulted in home buyers threatening to stop making payments. Now, if there's one thing that shouldn't lurch from recession to recession, should China's property market blow up? And that's your portfolio. I'll put a link up here to Portfolio Shield and in the description below, because this isn't just about a cash shortage, which is a big factor here. It's not just about the real estate market. It's not just about the global economy. The real underlying issue is, yes, the real estate market can go down, but what if it takes the banks with them? Well, as you're about to see with this headline from the Wall Street Journal, that's coming. As China Bank lose mortgage safety net as developers slide into distress. China is increasingly counting on its banks to step up mortgage lending and help boost the sinking housing market, but there's a problem. Lenders are stuck with many mortgages from boom times that are higher risk of not being repaid. And it certainly doesn't that sound just like what happened during the great financial crisis here in the U.S.? If it does, it's because, well, it does. Let's continue on. Because China's property developers wrote at least $300 billion of mortgage guarantees over the past few years for partially built apartments that they pre-sold, a key point, according to regulatory filings. The real estate firms promised they would cover home buyers' interest in principal payments to the banks if the borrowers defaulted before their apartments were completed and delivered. Again, and this is that rising price issue. Hey, it doesn't matter if that buyer defaults. We got to because we're just going to turn around and sell that property property for a higher price when it's finished later on, but that's not happening.
What used to be seen as a no-lose proposition, again, sounds like the U.S. real estate sector going to the GFC, has now become a drag on Chinese banks. Dozens of real estate firms have slid into financial distress, making their mortgage guarantees far from certain. Many would-be home buyers no longer want to buy unfinished properties, and who can blame them, reducing demand for loans. And we see not only in China, but this is also happening in the U.S. Here in China, mortgage originations have fallen sharply. They've down 55% from January through July from a year before. New home sales by China's top 100 developers have dropped for 14 consecutive months, and they tumbled 47% in the first eight months of 2022. Again, you can see this whole notion is that once prices start coming down, the Ponzi scheme is over. You can keep the music going for a little bit longer, but at some point, not only developers fail, but now you're talking about the banks fail. This represents a whopping quarter percent of China's economy. Economy. And many developers are struggling with liquidity problems, shocking, and don't have enough money to finish their property projects. Over the summer, frustrated home buyers of more than 300 residential developments in cities across China threatened to stop making mortgage payments if their apartments weren't completed and delivered on time. And look for that number to increase because if home buyers default on loans of unfinished properties, developers that guaranteed those mortgages would be responsible for repaying the outstanding home loans, plus accrued interest and any penalties to the lenders. And that's why the beginning of today's show mattered because what did we learn about Evergrande? They don't have any money. So if you are a bank and you've lent Evergrande some money on some unfinished properties, you have to be thinking right now, you're not getting paid. Around 80% of new home sales in the country over the past decade were partially built homes that developers promised to deliver in one to three years, suggesting that this problem is far bigger than most people realize, as buyers typically put down 30% of a property's purchase price as a down payment, borrowed the other 70%, and started making mortgage payments immediately. And how does this turn into, of course, the economy there? And why are we likely to see act people in China stop making payments? Is it just because their properties aren't being finished? Is it just because prices may be falling? No, it's actually because the global economy is slowing. With this headline from the Wall Street Journal, the U.S. trade deficit shrank in July. The trade gap in goods and services shrank by 12.6% in July from the prior month to a seasonally adjusted $70.65 billion. Notably, imports fell 2.9%, and that means imports to the U.S. That happened in July. So I want you to think about this. When exports and imports shrink, that means the global economy is shrinking. And for China, which is a big export nation in dire need of dollars, we talked about the other day, you know, you start looking at our show from yesterday about Michael Burry saying, look, things there has to be blood in the street. A lot of things have to fail. You see that starting in China. And one of the ways we know it's only going to get worse is because imports are falling. That means their economy is slowing because U.S. consumers are demanding less goods. That's because our economy is also slowing. And here we can see perhaps the reason for this has to do with the Federal Reserve. The monetary base now shown in red against the trade deficit shown in blue or trade balance. And notably, the trade deficit started to widen the moment the Fed did QE. And how, why did we see that perhaps during the pandemic is because of all that borrowed money, the fiscal stimulus went and bought a lot of overseas goods and services. Now look at what's happening almost within a month of each other or less, we see the Fed's balance sheet start to decline and what's happening, the trade deficit is actually closing that gap rapidly, indicating that the global economy is slowing. Now, whether or not the Fed has everything to do with this, they're no doubt partially to blame and they're not going to stop now because they're about to go into their blackout period ahead of their next meeting. And what did we hear today from Fed's Bullard? He leans more strongly to a third 75 basis point rate hike in a sign that the Fed is only going to continue to tighten until things break. But what does this mean for the labor market here in the U.S.? Well, let's turn to our chief strategist, Jeff Snyder, who writes in his daily about the recent unemployment claims. Here he notes that the question moving forward is whether the improvement in unemployment filings represents a genuinely improving labor market, nothing more than temporary minor blip or this downtrend is a statistical or even real fluctuation is common. He notes that the household survey showed that while employment was up marginally both July and August, the gain was entirely in part-time work as full-time jobs have substantially reduced economy-wide. If firms in the aggregate are content to primarily control labor costs via converting full-time positions to part-time, this does not lead to a 
renewed rise in jobless claims, it might account for the temporary rollover, which suggests that the U.S. economy is also slowing down and not just the U.S. economy. We're obviously seeing Europe, China, the entire rest of the world. We're all slowing together. And that means we're sowing the seeds of another recession. And if what's happening in China actually gets out of hand, well, now we see the beginnings of the next great financial crisis. I'm your host, Steve Ann Meter. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being fans. Bye now.